Now, Elijah, he taunted the church of his day. He taunted the worshipers of Baal. And he said, cry aloud, cut yourself. Maybe your God is sleeping. Maybe he is on a vacation. And I'm here to tell you today that the Christians have nothing but Paul. And the worshipers of Baal today are the worshipers of Paul. You will learn that Jesus told us who his father was and the types and shadows expose it to be Paul. So the foundational scripture we need for this argument is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 15. For though ye have 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have fathered you through what? Through the gospel. Paul is the father of the Christian church. And today you will learn something very shocking to you is that Paul was the father of of Jesus. Now think about Jesus. Why was he born supernaturally? But then he has a father by the name of Joseph. Now I don't have time to go through all of the Old Testament types and shadows and going into every scripture. I'm simply going to tell you and then let you study. The simple truth is in the Old Testament we have stories of twin brothers, stories of twin brothers. This is seen with Jacob and Esau. And Esau is a picture of the prophet Esau and Jacob is a picture of Paul. And when Jacob was born, he was grabbing a hold of the heel of Esau. And that is going into the one that will be coming doing miracles after the prophet Isa is the wolf in sheep clothing, just as you see Jacob putting hair on himself, deceiving his father. That is Paul. Paul came after Isa with the miracles. He is the false messiah of the New Testament. And it's very shocking, I know. It is. And the reason why Joseph was there when Jesus was born supernaturally is because Joseph was Jesus' twin. And Jesus' twin is the apostate Paul. Paul was the father. Everything that Jesus saw Paul doing, he was doing. So when we look at these scriptures, when it says, I am my father is one. He's talking about Paul. He's not talking about God. Let's go to some of these scriptures. This is going to be in John chapter 5, verse 23. This is a famous scripture that is misinterpreted. It reads that all men should honor the son, that's Jesus, even as they honor the father. He that honoreth not the son, honor not the father, which is have sent him now the father is Paul the son is Jesus and Jesus was telling you about the religion that Paul would give us and that is Christianity that is in order to honor the father you have to honor the son the only way to Paul <laughs> was through Jesus Paul was the father man this stuff right here, man, once I learned this, I was so amazed that Jesus was always talking about Paul. Paul's ministry is seen all through the Old Testament. Even when Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Now, Jesus wasn't talking about the Abraham of the past. Okay, he was talking about Paul. Paul 
and Abraham have many similarities. Moses and Paul has many similarities. Joseph and Paul has many similarities. Nimrod and Paul has many similarities. Cain and Paul has many similarities. There's nothing new under the sun. And when Jesus said, he that honors me must honor me like he honors the father. He was talking about Paul. He was not talking about worshiping. He was talking about reverencing. And we are told to honor our mother. We are told to honor our father. We are even told to honor all men. But the law of Moses definitely tells us to worship no other God. Worship is much deeper than honor or even referencing. It's much deeper than that. And so many of these Christians, they'll take John 5, 23, and they'll say, well, you're supposed to worship Jesus because Jesus said, honor me like you honor the father. Well, that is not true. Look at that same scripture in another translation. There's not one translation that's going to say, worship Jesus like you worship the father. No, because it doesn't mean worship. Paul was the father, just like Saul was the father of David. King Saul was the father of David. David was the son-in-law. And what Christians and Israelites fail to realize is that Benjamin was more mightier than Judah. As it is written, Jacob had two beloved sons. He had one son by the name of Joseph. He was the one that was falsely murdered. But he had one more son that he did not want to let go. And that was Benjamin. Benjamin was the man. And that's why from the tribe of Benjamin came the first king of Israel. And in the New Testament, it's the same thing. David, or the son of David, Jesus, was under Paul. Paul is the father of the Christian church. Now let's go to the writings of Samuel. Samuel says something that sticks out in most people. We read it and we don't get it. It's in 1 Samuel chapter 15. This is going to be verse 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie nor repent. For he is not a man that he should repent. Verse 30. Then he said, I have sinned. Yet honor me now, I pray thee, before the elders of my people and before Israel. And turn again with me that I may worship the Lord your God. So Saul acknowledged his sin, but he is saying, look, honor me for the people. Honor me. Because, man, let me tell you something. When Samuel came on the scene, they knew it was trouble. And so if the people of Saul would have found out what he did, they probably would have killed him. That's why he said, hey, hey, honor me, honor me, honor me for the people. And let's keep going. So Samuel turned again after Saul and Saul worshiped the Lord. This is what happened. OK, God is so wise that he allows us to see these truths that are in the types and shadows in the Old Testament. Paul was nothing more than the true king of not only Israel, but of the whole world. Paul was like the head of gold. Paul was like the Pharaoh. And Jesus was not greater than Paul. And this is seen in Matthew chapter 11 and 11. When John the Baptist, we are told, is greater than all men born of women. And we know that Jesus was born of a woman. But Jesus tells us something else. He said, but he that is least in the kingdom of heaven 
is greater than even John the Baptist. Now, John the Baptist, get it, was a picture of Paul, the man with all the churches. John the Baptist and Paul are one and the same. Think about John the Baptist. He was in the wilderness, okay, just like Paul was in the wilderness. What else? He was in prison, just like Paul was in prison. What else? He wore camel's hair, okay? What is this going into? This is going into the wolf and sheep clothing. This is Paul from the tribe of Benjamin. The symbol is the wolf. John the Baptist had marriage laws, okay? He was getting on Herod for who he married. He was getting on Herod, who wasn't even an Israelite. You see, it's just like Paul. Paul was an apostle to the Gentiles. John the Baptist was reaching out to the Gentiles. And it's the same thing with the apostate Paul. He has relationship laws in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? He totally undoes everything God said about marriage in the beginning. Going on. Everything you see in John the Baptist is what you see in the life of King Saul. I call him King Saul because he is the father of the Christian church. And just like John the Baptist was beheaded, just like King Saul was beheaded, it's the same thing with the apostate Paul. History tells us that he was beheaded. So after we realize that Paul and John the Baptist is one and the same, then we can get back to John the Baptist. John the Baptist was the greatest of all men. He was more than a prophet. And also, Jesus tells us that he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now, he was giving us a hint to his daddy. He was giving us a hint to who was his daddy. Now, if we go into the Bible, let's go to 1 Corinthians and let's go to chapter 15 and let's start at verse 7. This is proof that not only was Jesus talking about him being the least of all, but he also gives us a hint that he was last of all. This is going into 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 7. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles. And last of all, he was seen of me also as one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that am not meet to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. So Paul told us about the covenant with Ishmael. And Isaac, two sons, one is after the flesh and then one is of the free woman. This is why Paul was in Arabia, because he was the child that was persecuting the other Isaac. He was persecuting Isaac. Paul is telling you, look, I am the Gentile messenger. I have been persecuting Isaac or Isa. I am the one who murdered the prophet Isa. This is seen in Galatians chapter 4. This is why he was in Arabia. And he talks about two sons, although Abraham has eight sons. And he talks about him being the son that was persecuting the other son. This is why Jesus referred to him as Abraham. And he said, before Abraham was I am. And see, the Pharisees, they didn't get it. They did not get it. Jesus was not talking about him being before the almighty God. What's wrong with you? He was telling you that he came before Paul. He was the firstborn, okay? He was the son whom Jacob was grabbing a hold of his heel. And he tells us that he was last of all. Speaking of the apostate Paul, seen of Christ. So he's telling you that he was the last one and he's telling you that he was the least one. And Jesus himself said that John the Baptist was the greatest of all the prophets, but the one who is least in the kingdom of heaven. Speaking of Paul, OK, because Paul never talked about hell. All he talked about was heaven. Paul was the least in the kingdom of heaven. 
Now you have to wake up. You have to get some eye salve so you can see that Paul was the Abraham. Paul was the father. This is the reason why Jesus said, call no man your father. Don't call nobody your father. The prophet Muhammad was told that he is not the father. The only one who was the father, y'all, is Paul. His religion is on top today. His religion is the best of all religions in the eyes of the people. I mean, even Joe Biden is Christian. Okay, he told Netanyahu that they need to have a come to Jesus talk. Christianity is the most powerful religion coming from the most powerful man. And that is Paul. This explains all the scriptures where Jesus says, I and my father is one. He that has seen me has seen the father. All of the wonders, the miracles, the signs, all that stuff was all pointing to Paul. And that's why he tells you about the false Christ. He tells you about the false Messiah. But he also tells you about the comforter. He tells you about the one who would really come, who would be the real Gentile messenger, and that is the prophet Muhammad. And we sing that Saul is the one who I, David, he was the one who was jealous of the real man that would show up with the 10,000 Muslims in Mecca. As it is written, Saul has slain his thousands, but David his tens of thousands. This war was in between Judah and Benjamin. Judah and Benjamin. And we know that Jesus is of the house of David. He is the Messiah in Islam. But Paul, he is of the house of Saul. And he is the Messiah in Christianity. Although he makes it seem like you can receive Jesus in the New Testament, you can't. Because in order to receive Jesus in the New Testament, you will have to be associating Jesus with God. And that's why Jesus said, no, uh-uh. I'm not finna be Saul's armor bearer no more. I'm finna break the yoke from Jacob. As it is written, Esau will break the yoke of his brother. As it is written, Esau revolted from up under the leadership of Judah. Because Jesus was born first, but here we have Jesus seeing the miracles done in Paul and following after Paul. Although he is firstborn, he's not the father. His brother Paul is. His brother Paul is Lord of the church. But he committed all judgment into the hand of the son. That's why he says Jesus is Lord. Now you understand that Jesus and Paul are one in the same. He that reverences me must reverence me as he reverenced my father. This was talking about Paul, Paul, Paul. It all points to Paul. And even Joseph was second in command to Pharaoh. Who is Pharaoh a picture of? Paul, okay? Joseph was under the leadership of Pharaoh. Joseph was in another religion, okay? He was in the same religion that in the future would be killing, guess who? The Israelites. That's why there arose a new Pharaoh that did not know Joseph. In other words, he had no respect for what the Joseph of Egypt did. He had no respect. He had no regard for him. And that's showing you that Joseph was on the other side. He was on the enemy's side. Joseph was not on the same side as the Israelites because his brothers had sold him into slavery. And he was for another nation, just like Jesus being the Messiah of another nation. Now, this stuff is advanced. This stuff is advanced. My goal is to reach out to teachers. My goal is to reach out to camp leaders, pastors, people who know 
all of the stories and the types and shadows of Jesus Christ, beginning with Moses. Just like Jesus told you, he said, beginning with Moses, he expounded unto his disciples all of what the types and shadows. He showed his disciples how he was Joseph. He showed his disciples about Pharaoh. He showed his disciples about the Passover. He showed his disciples about himself in all of the Old Testament types and shadows of himself. And this is how you know the church has it all wrong. They don't get the basic elementary principle teaching of Jesus, and that's Joseph. Joseph was falsely murdered, and it's the same thing with the prophet Isa. He was falsely murdered. Now, let's go back to John, and let's start at verse 19 of John chapter 5. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do For what things soever he doth, these also doeth the Son. Likewise, this was Jesus looking at Paul in the future. Paul was a miracle worker. He was following in the footsteps of Paul. Verse 20, for the Father loveth the Son. This is going into how Paul loves Jesus. And showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. Verse 21, for as the father has raised up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the son quickeneth whom he will. So Paul was raising people from the dead. Jesus was raising people from the dead. Verse 22, for the father judgeth no man, but have committed all judgment unto the son. Now this is going into how Paul made Jesus Lord of the church. He committed all judgment into the hand of Christ. Verse 23, that all men should honor the son. This is going into Jesus, even as they honor the father. And this is going into Paul. He that honoreth not the son. If you don't honor Jesus, then you don't honor Paul. It's just that simple. Jesus was the cupbearer for Paul. He wasn't worried about suffering on the cross. He knew Allah was going to take him. But what Paul left for Jesus to suffer, and that was the cup. He was the cup bearer. He had to suffer being up under Paul. That is why he said, Father, take this cup. Take Benjamin's cup from me. I do not want to be up under Benjamin, but nevertheless, thy will be done. It wasn't the cross he was worried about. It was the cup. He was Paul's cup bearer. Now, this is the truth right here in the house of David. You're going to see that in the Gospels. When Jesus was talking about his father, his father, his father, he was talking about Paul, Paul, Paul. Paul. Now you got to be careful. Okay, sometimes he would switch and talk about his real father. He was in a fight in between Joseph or Paul and his father. That's why when Mary said, me and your father was looking for you, Jesus said, I must be about my father's business. He was in between God and Paul. And that's the truth. This is why he was called the son of man. Here he was being born supernaturally, but he has a so-called father by the name of Joseph. Why? Because Paul was his father and Jesus was the son of Paul. Jesus was the son of man. All these people talking about they walking and talking with Jesus and they don't even know that Jesus was the servant of man and he was the son of man because he was the son of Paul. Paul created a religion On the so-called death, the false murder of the prophet Isa, Paul is the father of Jesus. Jesus is Paul's son. This is seen in the story of Bathsheba when David killed a man and took his wife and made a baby by her. That baby was very sick and that baby had to die. That baby is a picture of the prophet Isa, whom Allah will cause to die at the last day. And it's all Paul's 
fuck. Why you think Joseph was always worried about Benjamin? Benjamin, Benjamin. And Judah told his father, look, if I don't bring Benjamin back, I will take the blame forever. This is part of Jesus being a cupbearer. He took the blame. For the Bible says that his soul will be made an offering for sin. Not his body. Not his body. His soul was made an offering for sin. And it's all because of your boy. <laughs> your rabbi. Your teacher. Your daddy. If he's Jesus' daddy, he's your daddy. He bore the blame. He took the blame. He took it. And it was all Paul who did this thing. Okay. Two sons. Two covenants. Two beloved sons. Joseph and Benjamin is going into who? Jesus and Paul. Wake up. Wake up and read your Bible. Understand that Jesus is the cupbearer for Paul. Did Peter have the cup? No. Did James have the cup? No. Who had the cup in the New Testament? Who had Pharaoh's cup? It was your boy Paul talking about this is the new covenant in my blood. Okay? This is the truth. Now, Israelite camps, come holler at me. Come and see me, man. The truth right here is in the house of David. But I know what's in the back of your mind. You're saying, well, the covenant is in Isaac. Now think about it. Think about it. Paul proclaimed to be the apostle to who? The Gentiles. Paul was in Arabia. Why? Because Paul was the covenant of Ishmael. That's why God said, but my covenant shall be in Isaac. Now Isaac is Esau. Think about Esau. Think about Isaac. Abraham or your boy Paul. He took Jesus and sacrificed him. He took his son, Isaac, and he was about to sacrifice him. But God rescued him. And that's a picture of Abraham, B.K.A. Paul, taking Christ and was about to sacrifice him. But Allah raised him up to himself. Okay, that's why he said the covenant is going to be in Isaac and Jesus is the Messiah of Islam. He is the Messiah of the Muslims, just like Joseph was the Messiah of Egypt. And he's saving the world with corn. He's saving the world with the corn. What you can spell in corn, corn, Quran. Jesus is in the Quran. Paul ain't in the Quran. Okay, Jesus is the Messiah in the Quran. Paul stole the man's birthright, but he had to restore it. He had to restore. He had to restore. And that's why Jesus is the Messiah in the nation of Islam from the house of David. So you're right. The covenant is in Isaac because Paul talked about another covenant with Ishmael. And he was in Arabia. And he was trying to be the last and final messenger. But that right there was stolen. That right there didn't belong to him. Paul tried to seize it. He tried to steal it. He tried to be the messenger that came into Mecca with 10,000. Nope, but Saul only got the thousands. The women prophesied, Saul, you only slain your thousands. David, the champion who took down Goliath. Assalamu alaikum to my brothers and sisters in the truth. Like, share, subscribe.